those times when you when you thought about being a doctor. Remember, this is one of the most noble professions of all time. Why you're dealing with patients' lives, and so you know you got to put yourself into a patient. If some of you have been patients, and you know what it feels like to be a patient, and then having someone that you're having to put your entire life, your their your their total care into, okay, and that to trust you. So that's an unbelievable responsibility, which means that imposes upon us an unbelievable responsibility to learn the material. And not look for shortcuts. Let me just give you a big clue. I've been in the business a long time. There's no shortcuts to becoming a good doctor. None. I know a lot of you try. You know, we even have rapid review series. We have all these different things to kind of cut down and all that, whatever. There's no real shortcut. Okay? Because we really can't really actually make mistakes. At least serious mistakes. We'll make mistakes, but we want to make sure we don't make serious mistakes. So that means that we really have to really understand that stuff. And so I'll, you know, I want you to always remember, you know, what you're going into. You're going into something that your decisions or lack of decisions can actually affect a person's life. And if you're affecting that person's life, you're affecting other people's lives among them. So in other words, it just keeps on expanding out. So it is unbelievably. Um, you want to keep that in mind always. As you study and say, I, I just want to be the best there is. I want to be the best doctor I can be. Okay, and when you know you're in trouble, you know that you don't, you can't quite do this. That you're willing to ask for help. And a lot of, a lot of docs are really, you know, into this peer pressure thing. They don't want to admit that maybe they don't know everything. Get out of it, okay? Okay, because there's people a lot brighter than you that will actually help you. So don't be afraid of asking for help when the time comes. Okay, and that'll be probably the first time you're on duty. You've just been given a, a, a gift to be able to get, get into medical school, but understand that all the people around you that are powering you know, or helping you know are just as good at what they do as you are what you do. You're all a team, and you're no big shot. There's too many people that are big shots. They think that, well, I'm a doctor. Well, big deal, <laughs> you know. What does that mean? You're just that $150,000 in debt. <laughs> you know, this is the only time that you will have in your entire life to actually really learn basic science right now. Because I will tell you, when you're on your rotations, you won't have that much time. You'll be working up patients and trying to look up stuff about that patient. Okay? Then you get into residencies, forget it. I mean, you hardly have any time to, uh, to, to do anything. Certainly not study basic science. Then you get into practice, forget it. Okay, you're just waiting for the continual medical education time to come. In other words, there is no time but now to establish that core. Which means, if your foundation is weak, then anything you build upon this is weak and will fall down. Because you lack the basic knowledge, the basic something that I know that I'm on the right track. I'm on the right track. Okay. It's not because I'm some kind of genius, I'm an idiot actually. My sister has one, one or higher IQ than I'm. I'm 110, she's 111. I still haven't forgiven my parents for So that's not exactly the highest IQ. You know what the, you know what the key is for me? Hard work. I don't ask, uh, tell me what I need to know on an exam. I just read the text. Okay, because why? Because I want to know everything. I want to be a great doctor. I want to be able to, to help people. I don't want to make a mistake. They're putting their life into my hands. So therefore, I owe them to give them my very, very best. That's what's in my head when I study those long hours. That should be in your head too. If it isn't, you're in the wrong field. I'm just gonna tell you that right off the bat. You're in the wrong field. Not everyone at a medical school necessarily should be in medical school. Especially if you're thinking about, you know, different things other than, you know, being in medicine, you know, putting time in. Do that. Put things in the right priority, and trust me, especially if you're a, a religious person, you cannot give God. Okay, you give God the time, it'll make up the difference in between. Okay, so that time with your, with your family, that time with your God, and then medicine comes in. If you put it in the outer order, you're going to be screwed up big time. My hands the very same hands that now do brain surgery. Right around that time, they had scars everywhere from pulling weeds that were bloody. This
But I think that that's also what has kept me on the top of my game. You know, back then when I was in medical school, I remember thinking, wow, I look at my classmates. As you know, you've got some of them who train at the best prep schools in the country, who come from the most distinguished families in the United States from tradition of education. And they were the to very time education that I was eager to learn. When I felt, I always knew that I had something that always didn't happen, and that was that fire in my brain that gives me go. It drains me emotionally when I think about it. At the end of the day, I feel like I'm coming in like a tiger. And I promise in that day, I believe that there's no one more qualified than I am to do this case. Rock and roll.